welcome back to my channel my name is Pilumi and if it's your first time tuning into my channel you're welcome and if you're a returning viewer you're welcome and if you haven't subscribed please do subscribe to my channel give this video a thumbs up share the video and ultimately turn on your notifications so that you're made aware when I upload a video and you don't miss it okay so today's video is going to be a sewing video and it's sort of like a challenge for me as well uh, so I wouldn't call it a tutorial so at the end of this video we can both decide if it's worth your time following the steps that I did I took to achieve the result, end result okay I don't even know what I'm saying but basically I'm just trying something out for the first time it looks like a very simple top but um, I don't know why I'm sort of scared I, don't, I just don't want it to go wrong anyway um, I asked on uh, Thursday on my Instagram let me just put my camera on the tripod so I can talk properly um, yikes alright so I asked on Instagram on my sister's what I should do with this fabric I still don't know the name of this fabric I wish I had like a fabric expert to tell me what it is but it is it is not stretchy at all it is tightly woven I think it's a crepe or some printed chambray fabric I don't know but I really like the tiny flower details on it and then just the dash of green I like it so, um, I put up three options for a top to make really, because I think it would make a really nice top. So I put up three options and asked people to vote. And no one voted for any of the other two options. Everyone voted for this one top. And I think it's really nice. I also like it. Let me show you guys the picture. But the picture will be on the screen so you guys can see it. But this is the picture. It's kind of like a, a top with like a tight detail in front and then a gathered skirt no not skirt a gathered waist and flutter sleeves i don't know whether it's a you can call this kind of sleeve different things i guess depends on the volume it could be a bell sleeve a flutter sleeve a trumpet sleeve they still have the same like inverted triangle shape anyways just depends on how full it is so i would call it a bell sleeve with a bell sleeve detail and i think it's really nice and this fabric will work well with it so that's what you guys voted for i think it's really simple but something about it is making my heart beat and i'm afraid of making a mistake and everything just flopped <laughs> i really want to get this right so i'm just going to try and walk you through everything that i do every mistake i make everything that goes right with it i'm going to let you guys know and i hope at the end of the video you were able to make sense of everything I did and if it turned out well you can also follow the same steps that I took to achieve your own top to make your own top um, so I hope this really goes well I'm really hoping it goes well um, so yeah I think we just get right into it no more talking I think I'm also gonna do a voiceover for this video I'm not gonna talk you through the video because I'm gonna be nervous every single step of the way and also I'm gonna be using the pattern because whenever I do something that I'm really not sure about, I don't want to just dive into the cut in the fabric. I want to get it right on the pattern first before I then place it on the fabric and cut. So it's going to be a pattern tutorial and a sewing tutorial at the same time. Um, it's going to be quite long, but I'm going to try shorten it and make it, you know, straight to the point. Alright, so um, let's get right into the video. <laughs> Find out how to take these measurements by watching my video on how to take accurate body measurements. The link will be in the description box below. To begin making the pattern, I folded my pattern paper in half. Ignore this line I drew at the beginning. I, I wanted it to be the center front. I ended up using the fold line as the center front and the center back line. From the center front line, mark three and a half inches, and from that point, mark five and a half inches. This is the standard measurement for the neckline and the shoulder line, which includes 0.5 inch seam allowance. From the shoulder points, come down by 1 inch and then draw the shoulder slope like so. From the top of the paper, which is my reference point, mark half of your armhole measurement. Mark that on both sides and square across to create the chest line.
Next, mark the bust point measurement, the under bust length and the front waist line. Mark this on the other side as well and square across each line. On the chest line, mark quarter of the bust circumference plus one inch for seam allowance. On the waistline, mark quarter of the waist circumference and then add two inches, one inch for the dart and one inch for the seam allowance. And then connect the points together. On the bust line, mark half of the bust span starting from the front, center front line. Then mark the same on the waistline. On the bust line, mark down by one inch and then connect this to the waistline. To create the dart, mark 0.5 inch on both sides of the vertical line and then connect each dart leg to the apex to create an inverted V shape. To create the waistband, mark 2 inches up from the waistline and then square this across. Now back to the top of the bodies. Draw a vertical line from the shoulder point to the chest line. Find the midpoint of that line and mark inwards by 3 quarter of an inch. Then draw the front armhole curve like so and then mark the back armhole. To draw the back neckline, mark 1 inch from the center line and then connect this to the neck point with the curved line. I should have connected mine to the fold line. Um, the line I drew initially was deceptive but not to worry, I corrected this later on. I highlighted with a red marker so you can see where I'm cutting. I will be cutting the back pattern first of which the only difference right now is the neckline and the armhole. And then I cut the waistband. I also separated the front pattern from the back pattern before I proceeded to cut out the front armhole curve. I did not want to sew that at the back, so because I didn't think it was necessary for this style. So I removed the, the dad's one inch allowance from the side of the back pattern like so then I cut it off. Cut off the remaining part of the dart and then join the waistband pieces together with a paper tape. To create the front tie, add a piece of paper to the center front. Create the V neckline by drawing a slightly curved line from the neck point to the chest line. To create the front tie, I played around with the lines and curved till I decided to just draw it by hand and then I was satisfied with that. So just do that and then when you're satisfied, satisfied with your curve and how your tie looks, you can then cut off the excess paper to reveal the front neckline as well as the tie pattern. Moving on to the sleeves, which is actually very easy. Mark the sleeve head measurement, which is your bust measurement divided by 6 inches plus 1 inch. Square that measurement across the paper. Find the midpoint and then from the top of the paper, mark the bicep length or half sleeve length. And then divide half of the bicep circumference on both sides of the vertical line and square that across. Draw a diagonal line on both sides to connect the half bicep circumference point to the midpoint of the sleeve head. On the right side, divide that line by four parts. Drop the third mark by half an inch and then raise the first mark by one inch. This is because the front armhole um, is deeper than the back armhole. On the left side, which is going to be the back armhole, do the same but raise the front mark by one inch and the third mark by half an inch draw the sleeve head by connecting all the points together with a curved ruler
now you can cut out your pattern i wanted to use the slash and spread method for the bottom half of the sleeve but as i was cutting my fabric i realized that the fabric was not enough for that method so i just um gathered whatever fabric was left and used that for the bottom sleeve The peplum part of the top is just a straight piece of fabric that was gathered. So before I cut the other fabric pieces, I cut this part out. It was 12 inches long. And then take into consideration how long you want your top to be and then include hemming allowance and the seam allowance. And for the width, it should be twice the circumference of your waist plus seam allowance. After I was done cutting the peplum, I painted the rest of the pattern on the fabric. We're going to cut four pieces for the front, two for the main pieces, and then two for the facing. And then you're going to cut out four waistband pieces. I cut the back facing by placing the back pattern on, on the fabric and tracing it around and then I cut it. When you're cutting the waistband, cut the back waistband on the fold and add half an inch all around for joining the waistband to the peplum and the bodice. Also, cut the front waistband, leaving one inch on the center front. This was the fabric I had left after cutting all the pieces, so I straightened the edge and divided it into two. And this is the fabric piece that I'll be using for the bottom half of the sleeve. So these are all the fabric pieces that I'll be joining together to make the Pinterest inspired top. I hope you have found this pattern to be very helpful. In the next video, I will show you how to sew the fabric pieces together to create the top. Do subscribe. Subscribe to my channel and turn on your notifications so you don't miss out when I do upload that video on Friday, 1 p.m. Central Time. All right, I'll see you in my next video. Bye, guys. Smoking silly sex. Smoking silly sex.